Hey guys, Hot Rod Reverend here. Welcome to the channel here on YouTube and the 1955 Ford Fairlane Club sedan that is the centerpiece really of this channel. And of course, many of you know that I enjoy running the V8 Y block from the 50s. It says a 292, it's a C2 block, been bored 60 over, 301 cubic inches. I've just put a three deuce intake on here with three Holly 94s. I will have an update for you on that later on. But today, we want to get back to our 342 cubic inch build. I do have an extra C2AE block, and there's several videos here on my channel that just kind of walk you through all the work that we've been doing. I am partnering with Tim McMaster up in Hanford, California, otherwise known as the Y Block Guy. And recently, I had the chance to pay him a visit to see how we were doing with our block, our crank, and some of the rotating parts and assembly. Let's get to that right now. Okay, so what we've done to your block since last time we met up, um, I believe, what was it bored to? Like a 30 over? 30 over 312, yeah. so 3.83. 30, yeah. yeah. So I bored it to 3.875, that's 3 and 7 eight. And to me, that's about the max you can go. Um, it will still seal with a stock head gasket. Um, I have made them bigger, but then you have to get like a big bore right. head gasket yeah. for them. But that, that's kind of like the limit I like to go. Um, we have line honed it, um, decked it. You already had the cam bearings in it. Right. What's that little wire doing there? It's like one of those crazy hairs. But other than doing a cleanup on it, it's pretty much ready to go together. Yeah. Now, another thing that I do to all the blocks when I'm honing them is I have a little ball hone that I run down the lifter bores. When you are putting these things together, it is very important that each lifter is free and easy in their bore. No burrs. They have to spin. Yeah. Um, I've heard of guys sticking them in there. It's like, oh, well, that's a little tight, but it'll loosen up as you run. No, you just ruined your camshaft there. So it's very important. I deburr them. If there's, say, somebody nicked it or something, I'll run a half inch reamer down in there to make or even, sure. It's even clear. casting flash probably yep. got to take care of that too, yeah. just in case you. Sure. So, like I said, other than a final cleaning, this thing is basically ready to go together. To receive a crankshaft like this, now this is not yours, but yours will be just like yours is over by the grinder. Sure. Um, I did cut the mains down to 292 size already, but I left the rod journals stock size, stock stroke for a 312 because we hadn't decided to make yours a stroker yet. So we will do the same thing to this. We'll grind the crank pins down to two inch and offset grind it so you will have a three and five eight stroke when you're done. Now, if you zoom in real close and look at that, you can see the height of the thrust here and how it is on the back side you can tell that that journal has been moved out to a longer stroke this is a stock crank mm -hmm. here next to it so yeah you can just now this one hasn't been ground tell, you yep. can see the exactly. lines yep. in it tell the difference and this one has been ground but not polished it's been hanging on the rack for a while it's got a little bit of flash rust oh. on it Talk to, talk to us, Tim, about um, having 312 cranks uh, standard, uh, the 292 standard mains and everybody's concern over the slinger. Well, Just mention that real quick because okay. I don't really think. There's a lot of guys issue. that absolutely have to have the slinger on it. Um, I grind them down. They don't have slingers on like the, a lot of the FEs. It, it's not a bad thing to have, but it's not absolutely necessary. Quite frankly, I, I haven't had a leaky rear main seal in almost forever. I did have a guy call me. I built an engine for him a long time ago, and he says it's just starting to leak a little bit at the back, but it's got quite a few miles on it. Yeah. Um, every time I run them in, I check them for leaks, and I don't know. With all the people that seem to have trouble with leaky rear main seals, <coughs> I... I just don't seem to have that problem. Um, I have done little pictures and a, right. uh, what would you call that, an article. On... And we're going to put a link in the description here okay. for that too. And Tim, if um, we can. We need to do a video. Exactly. I need to help you with that. Sure. We could even do it on your engine. Although I was going to say a, a 312 would be a more interesting one because yep. there, there really aren't any good neoprene seals for 312s out there. And I'll just throw this out there. Um, 
What I have found to be the best seal for a 312 is actually a modified 318 Chrysler seal. I used to buy them from a guy in Texas, Ford Craft, his name was Don, but he got old and doesn't want to do it anymore, so he told me his secrets and I've been modifying my own and having real good luck with them. Maybe someday we'll go into that, but it's, it's easy, but you can really mess them up if you do it wrong. Right. <laughs> right. Hey guys, just a quick commercial break here. This isn't about anything else, but what's on the channel and specifically what's on the website, hotrodreverend.com. A lot of you know, I am a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I hope you'll get on the website, read a little bit about the biography, but most importantly, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ that I preach. I want you to know Jesus Christ as your personal savior and have a relationship with him. It's my privilege not just to own this car and love Y blocks and encourage a lot of you out there that have a build or project at home in your garage, but also uh, to be a called preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ and serve in our church. Secondly, also on the website, we've got a great page there that has everything that you guys want in, in the Hot Rod Reverend gear, people buying t-shirts and stickers and coasters, all kinds of stuff. You guys are more than welcome to that. But the best deal going is uh, the, the digital manuals, the 1949 to 59 uh, Ford Motor Company manuals that almost a thousand pages each that have the illustrations in one manual and then all the part numbers in the other manual. Of course, it covers some of the engine, but body parts, sheet metal, trim, transmission, mechanical parts, interior, all of that. These are a great addition to, for you to have to anything that you use when you're restoring your car, when you're going through and uh, maybe trying to finish off that build, looking for particular parts, or maybe how an assembly all goes together, what the parts list is like. So Get on hotrodreverend.com today, and if you need to, shoot me an email at dan.jessup at hotrodreverend.com. Thanks. Okay, Thank something you. else I want to point out about crankshafts. There's a lot of talk out there, not just in Ford guys, Y-Block guys, or whatever, but in particular, any crankshaft in an automotive world, I don't want anything ground farther than a 10. I'd rather have a standard crank. No 30s for me. Well, I tell you what, none of these cranks are hardened. They're the same hardness all the way through. We know that we already grind these things down from 312 to 292 journal size, and that's an eighth of an inch. Uh, we're taking 3 16th of an inch off when we offset grind them. The key to a good crankshaft is the radius right here, that rounded area. Say that again a little louder for the guys in the back row, Tim. <laughs> The radius is very, very, very important. There you go. I'll show you a crank right here, okay. and I can happily say it was ground by another shop, and why it's on my rack, I don't know, but this tag is from their shop, whatever it was. And a lot of production shops will not take the time to dress their stones properly. I don't know why, it's not that hard. But if you get in there and look at that, that is square. I mean, it's just, there's right. no radius exactly. to it. Exactly, no radius at all. Um, and Tim, how long have you been grinding cranks? Over 40 years. All right, and how did you cut your teeth on machine work? Grinding cranks. Okay. <laughs> I was taught by a fella in Visalia. Um, he talked about how much experience he had. I think he had you know, five years experience, but I think it was one year experience, five years over. Because he told me, I don't worry about putting a radius in them. I had a brand new crank grinder at my disposal and I was gonna use all the tools. And when I taught myself by reading and learning, you know, we used books back then. We didn't have YouTube. <laughs> but anyway, for the carpenters out there, you know what a gusset is. So when you put two pieces of wood together like that and just nail it, oh, it's going to do that. But if you put a gusset across it, that strengthens it. That's what that radius does. When you take that radius out, you're asking for a broken crankshaft. Now, most production shops get away with it because they're going into low stressed engines. But if you have anything that you're gonna want some performance out of, if you've got a crankshaft that does not have a good radius in it, I don't care if it's 10, 30, 40, 50, get rid of it. Get a crank that has a good radius. There you go. All right, so Tim, uh, walk us through some of the parts we need for our 342 build and maybe just kind of go through some of these pieces, maybe some measurements, maybe some manufacture specs, some things we need to know okay. to be valuable for us, okay? Okay, well, um, first of all, we need the crankshaft, and we've talked about that already. Uh, 
Um, we need some good connecting rods. Now, these connecting rods, I get these from John Mummert. And we all know about John Mummert Y Block. Uh, these, he actually sells these to make a 312 stroke 292 crank. So the big end is set up for a two inch crank pin and they're stock length for a 312. They're six inch 254, says so right on there. And then they're regular uh, 912 pins. So this rod would work in a lot of different applications, but this is what we use in our 312 or our 342 stroker. Now, because we are getting the stroke up to three and five eighths, we need a different pin height. So I, I have these pistons made by Racetech. They've been real good to me. I think they make John Mummert's pistons too. That's how I got hooked up with them. But the, the pin height, oh, what is it? Should say it on here, yeah. So it's a 1.690 compression height. And that works with the stroke. It's a three and seven eighths bore. But the cool thing about it was that three and seven eighths bore, um, I actually order rings for a, a Jeep engine, a late Jeep, you know, it's actually a Chrysler. Well, it's an old AMC engine, but it's made by Chrysler because Chrysler updated and put metric rings. So I can get a metric ring pack for these off the shelf and they're uh, 1.5 millimeter compression rings and a four millimeter oil ring. So you get less friction that way. Now they're just a flat top uh, with the extra displacement on the engine with the 113 heads or you're running G heads, uh, you're gonna be right at about 10 to one compression. Now with the, the two inch crank pin, you can't run a standard Y block bearing, can you? But just like the Jeep rings off the shelf, we use a Clevite CB610A, which is a very popular bearing. Uh, they are actually meant for, uh, going back to the earlier motors, they ran them in the 225 Oddfire V6s. 350 Buick V8s, and then about the latest one they ran them in was the little Iron Duke four-cylinder, the 151 that was very prevalent in the 80s. They came in, oh, what were those little cars they had? Citations, Pontiac Fieros, so they're, they're very easy to come by. I do want to point out here as we look at these crankshafts on the rack is that you can tell they're labeled 312, 342. This is Tim's stroker crank, but like the other video that I have here on the channel that tells you how to identify a 312, you can tell that there's a difference here with the first two throws. First two counterweights on a 292 are not in line, they're offset. First two counterweights on a 312 are in line. This also holds true for the 292 forge crankshaft, the steel forge crankshaft that came out in 1961 in the heavy duty trucks. Now, in addition to the block I've got up there, you can tell if you look around the shop from some of the video clips here, Tim has got quite a few engines that he's working on, several different projects, not just Ford Y blocks, but flatheads, willies, all kinds of uh, different engine manufacturers that diesel engines and everything else up there. It's a full service machine shop for sure, but there are some Y block projects that we're going to take a look at right now. Yeah, we've got another one we're finishing up right here. This is a 342 stroker. All right, here we go. Come around, take a look. See what casting number you see on that cylinder head there? That's yeah, 113. 113. And this has got 194 intake valves, 16 exhaust valves. This has got a little bit hotter cam than most do. Uh, this is a, uh, let's see if I can get the numbers right. It's a, on 112 degree lobe centers, it's a, 282 advertised duration, 230 at 50, 485 lift. It is not an off the shelf brand name camshaft. It is a regrind that I had made from Oregon camshafts. Uh, Oregon cam grinding, they do a lot of camshafts for me. Um, I'll give a shout out to Francisco down at Precision Camshaft too. He does some for me. He does a lot of my industrial cams. Oh, look at that. What's that little corner hey, right there? Hey, there we go. Oh, these head gaskets, they're on right. There you go. 
Um, let me say something real quick though. I have actually seen some factory Ford head gaskets that don't have that little corner there. Uh, this one here is running a stock B intake. Uh, this engine will be going to Pennsylvania. Uh, there's a fellow back there named Jim. I know he watches your channel. He'll be probably watching <laughs> when you put this thing out. So here's your engine, Jim. We're getting it ready. We'll be running it here in a couple of weeks. Pretty sharp. The valve covers, I think we talked about these before. Spotlight Customs. Spotlight Custom. Customs. Yeah, I mentioned Spotlight Customs. Uh, don't you put a link to Spotlight mm -hmm. in here? Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, Brandon at Brandon, Spotlight. Yeah. Good guy. Yep. This one here, that's a 292. That's actually a 55 Thunderbird engine. Um, that block is done also, just like yours. It does need a final cleaning. It's probably going to be the next one I put together. Okay. The heads are up front, sitting next to yours, all done. Okay. Parts for it are here on the shelf. I don't know if you're looking at this, but... Yep, I was kind of going the, through all this. A big impeller there. There's a special there. water pump for the Thunderbird. They run the spacer here, so it's got bigger impellers. That's a Thunderbird only pulley and damper. Thunderbird oil pan. It's the only one that has the big, yep. deep rear mm -hmm. sump. This is a 55 and, intake. Yep, yeah. and look at that. And he, he paid good money to have that, oh, I know. that teapot rebuilt <laughs> and good. running the stock choke. Uh, this, this is a... It's serious. It, it, it's yeah. a real, uh, what am I trying to say? Not Concorde, but he wants it stock. Right, yeah. yeah. And from what I understand, it's a pretty nice car. There's the rockers for it, exhaust yeah. manifolds, valve covers. Well, guys, thanks for joining us on looking at this 342 cubic inch wide block build. And I hope that you'll like and subscribe and continue to watch the series here, especially when we get all the rotating assembly parts and get the block back here, the heads back here to my garage, and we'll put everything together for you just like you would do at home. That's going to be great ending to this series. We'll fire it up on an engine run stand and go through all the motions. We'll have a number of uh, further videos you can imagine, quite a bit of content here on building up a Y block. We'll also have in coming weeks an uh, update here on the three deuce build. We're going to have another uh, video on the visit to Tim's shop. There's a lot that's going on up there in Hanford, California. And as well, we're also going to have a giveaway. Now, we're getting very close to 5,000 subscribers, so please stay tuned to this. Watch what's going on. What we're going to be giving away is definitely something that will help you with your Y-Block build. Uh, most probably, I'm looking at a B intake. I haven't 100% determined that yet, but I think it's what we're going to be doing. Thank you guys for getting on the channel here, subscribing and sharing, and it's great to see the growth this past month. We'll see you on the next one.